Now that we're able to create a membership, let's set up a way for the user to manage their membership. So usually if you have a customer that creates a membership, you want to give them the ability to either update their credit card information or cancel their membership. And if they cancel their membership, you want to give them an option to later on resubscribe, things like that. So in video five, we'll begin the process of setting up our billing portal. So we'll be working inside of the API, the backend on this video. And this is very similar to what we've been doing. Like when we created a checkout session, we needed to create this session ID before we could send them off to the checkout page. Well, we'll do the same thing. We need to create a session ID for the billing portal before we send them off to the billing portal page. Setting up the Stripe billing portal is very similar to setting up the checkout page. What we need to do is we need to call one of our APIs. This API is going to check to make sure the user is the user and then send back a session ID after it gets done talking with Stripe. So it's going to call Stripe, get back a session ID, send that back to the Angular application. The Angular application is going to turn around and send the user off to the billing portal page, the Stripe billing portal page. The customer could either add a credit card, remove a credit card, cancel their membership, or, or resubscribe. When, when they're done doing whatever they're do doing there, they go back to, in this case, I'm just going to send them right back to the home page. Stripe also has really good documentation on how to do this. If we go back to the Stripe documentation, we visited this page in the last couple of videos. And you can find the, this link down in the description if you're watching this on YouTube. And if you're watching this on oopcoders.com, you'll be able to find it in the helps tab off to the right. If you click on the help tab and click on that link, you'll end up on this page. And the section you're looking for is the create portal session. Click on this on the right. And this is kind of what we're going to be doing in this video, but we're going to be changing it around a little bit, but I'm just going to copy this API right here. So copy this. If you are looking for the finished version of this after this video, you could go here and just click on the snippets link and you could just copy and paste the finished version that I, have, that I have here. The reason I'm using this right here, I just want to go through it line by line what we're, we're trying to do. So that's the reason I'm copying and pasting this part here. Let's jump into our payments controller. Back inside of our API, the back end, we'll open up the payments controller. And inside the payments controller, I have this placeholder API down here. And we'll replace this part right here with a snippet we're getting off of Stripe. So what is the job of this API? What's the mission of this API? Well, the goal of this API is to return us a session. This session has a session URL, and we're going to use that later on from our Angular application to redirect the user to the billing portal. So that's the job of this API. So for our API to complete this job, it needs the customer ID. That's one of the most important things for this API. It needs a customer ID to create the session. Now to get this customer ID, we need to do this in a very secure way. The reason is, is if this creates a session for the wrong person, then the wrong person will get access to sensitive information for that customer. So we need to get this customer ID in a secure way. And we'll be doing that in the next video. I'm going to put it in as a string for now. And in the next video, we're going to be securing this API and getting this customer ID from our database. Right here, Stripe has an example or a workaround on a way to get the customer ID by creating a session and getting the customer ID that way. But they tell you right here in this comment that you definitely want to get it from the database and you want to do this in a secure way where you authenticate the user. And we'll be, again, taking care of that in the next video. So this whole section here, we don't even need this. This is just a workaround that Stripe gives us. And I'm just going to remove this. So what you're interested in is this right here. So here we set up some options and you need the customer ID. And we'll get that from the Stripe dashboard in a second. And also we need a return URL. So we're going to be sending the user back to the home page whenever they update their account. So let's set up this return URL. So what we'll do is we'll pass that into the customer portal request. Now I already have that made and that'll be inside of the models folder and it's the customer portal request. Open that up. And here I'll just add one property and that's going to be our return URL and that's going to be required. So anyone using this API needs to include that. 
and I'll bring that in. And that's all we need to do in this file. So I'll close this down. And then we'll get this return URL from the request. And select the return URL. Now we're already setting up our, our secret key so we can remove this. So here we set up our service. This is very similar to when we we're setting up our checkout. And then we create a new session, pass back the entire session. Later on, we're gonna be passing back just the URL. But in this case, I'm gonna show you the entire session before we do that. Now let's jump into the Stripe dashboard and get our customer ID. From within the dashboard, you can find the customers by going to customers and then pick which customer you want and copy the customer ID. This is what you're after. And drop the customer ID in here. And also while we're here, let's put all this within a try block. So if there's any errors creating our session, we'll get back a Stripe exception. So I'll create a try block. And then I'll move this up. So cut this out of here, add it within the try block. And then this will be a Stripe exception. So Stripe exception, and then I'll replace this. And I'll make this just an E. I just prefer it that way. Clean it up a little bit. I'll remove the extra space here. Save it so it formats it for me. And now we're ready to test this API. So you want your API to look like this. So let's restart the application. The API we just created is API Payments Customer Portal. So you wanna open this one up and this is gonna be a post and it's gonna be API Payments Customer Portal. That's the endpoint. And one required field is the return URL. So I already have that set up. So you wanna pass that in as raw JSON. And when we run this, we're gonna get back an error. I didn't wanna take care of this error. I wanted to show you this error before we actually fix it. The reason is, is it kind of threw me for a loop when I first seen it. So I just wanted to show you how to fix it. So let's see this error if we hit send. And we're getting this Stripe exception error back. And the reason we're getting this error like this is because we set that up in our try block. We just set that up. And it's letting us know that we need to set up our customer portal settings before we we do this and it even tells you where you could do that so let's open up this link right here so we'll go inside of our dash dashboard and update our billing portal settings to find your customer portal setting area you could go to settings and go under customer portal and here's where you can update your customer portal settings so let's add a logo so we'll go to brand settings and change the logo And that's all we'll do here. I'll save the changes for that. Go back to settings, customer portal. Then here you could change the settings for what the customer can update. I'm just gonna turn off all this so they won't be able to update their email or their shipping address. And then down here, I'm gonna give a headline, Stripe Course Awesome Memberships. That's a good headline. And then the terms link, we already have that made. And the privacy link. And then before you save it, you can see the preview. So this is what it'll look like when the customer comes to the page. Let's change it around where they can cancel their membership and also change some credit card information. If we go back here and up here, and we'll allow the customer to update their payment method and then also allow the customer to cancel their membership. And we'll allow them to cancel it at the end of the billing period. And then hit save again. Let's preview it one more time. And now there's a cancel plan button right here. And here they could add different payment methods and remove old ones if they want to. That looks great. Let's make sure we save everything. So everything is saved. Now our API should be working inside Postman. Now if we test that API out again, we should get back a session. So hit send. And we do, so we're getting the entire session. So now we get a whole bunch of useful information like the ID for the customer that's in here. Also, you'll notice the return URL that is here as well. And what we're after is the URL. This is how we're gonna redirect the user to the billing portal by this URL. So this is what we actually wanna pass back whenever anyone calls this API. So let's make that change. We'll make one more change and it'll be this right here. So we don't really need the entire session. All we need is the URL. 
So I'll replace this section here. And I'll, I'll just return a object with the URL inside of it from the session. And then also up here, I'm going to add a comment because we need to come back and make sure we protect this API. So I'll leave a comment here so I can push it up to GitHub. And this is just warning everybody that this API is not protected and we'll be taking care of that in the next video. Let's restart the application. Now when we run this, we should only get back the URL. So I'll minimize this a little bit, hit send. And yes, we get back the URL. Now if you put this in the browser, we should be sent off to the billing portal. Let's try it out. And let's add that in here. And that should send us off to the billing portal, and it does, great. Now in the next video, let's protect our API so only authorized users can use that API.